Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be continuing my mission to paint all of Warhammer Quest Curse City using Army Painter Speed Paints. And I'm going to be painting two of the heroes in today's video. I am painting the two stalwarts, starting with Brutog the Ogre. One of my favourite hero miniatures from the set, although Brutog is not actually one of my favourite heroes. I find him quite difficult to use. But as you can see, we are starting with a matte white primer. And as is becoming a bit of a tradition with the speed painting videos, I'm going to use Lead Belcher to paint all of the metal elements on the miniature, and there are a lot on this miniature. Brutog is wearing quite a lot of chainmail, so all of that is going to get a coat of the Lead Belcher. He is also wearing some kind of jerkin with metal plates stitched to it, so all of those metal plates will need to get Lead Belcher on them. He has his gut gouger weapon in his left hand. We have the top of the mace in his right hand. We have the belt buckle. Of course his helmet, and also he has some armour on his legs. Furthermore, he has a lot of leather straps around his wrists, some of which have studs in, so all of those studs need to be picked out in Lead Belcher. And he also has some weapons strapped to his back, which have little metal details as well. Once that is completely dry, we are moving to our first Army Painter Speed Paint, and that is Gravelord Grey. And we are going to apply this to most of the metal elements. This is going to go over the chain mail, it's going to go over the jerkin, both the metal and the actual leather jerkin itself. I'm going to put it on the weapons, the leg armour and also the helmet. I am not going to apply it to any of the leather straps or the buckles for the leather straps, and I'm not going to apply it to his great big pauldron on his left shoulder. That I'm going to do in a different colour. Next I'm switching to dark wood and I'm going to do the handle of the mace with that. Also, he has some fur trim on his clothing, so I'm going to apply dark wood to that. And also, he has his boots. I'm not going to paint the fur trim of the boots with the brown, just the boots themselves. And you can see in this section of the video, I have removed Brutog from his base. That's just going to make it easier for me to paint up underneath his clothing. If you have glued Brutog to his base, you can still do it, but it's just a little bit more difficult. Next up we have Crusader Skin, and I'm obviously going to apply this to his face to bring out all those really cool details on his facial expression. And it goes on his neck and also on his arms, obviously. And I'm putting quite a thick coat of the Crusader Skin on him here, just because I don't want his skin tone to be too pale. Next up we are moving to Hardened Leather, and we're going to apply this to all of the leather straps around his wrists, we're going to apply it to his belt, we're also going to apply it to any buckles that haven't already been painted with Gravelord Grey. On the back of the miniature he has a satchel and some weaponry, that's going to get coated with the Hardened Leather, and also his massive pauldron. We're going to paint that with the Hardened Leather to give it a really cool coppery finish which is going to add a bit more interest to his armour, rather than having it all in grey. Next up is Pallid Bone, and I'm going to paint the little skull detail on his base. He also has a bottle on his belt, and we're going to paint that with the Pallid Bone, along with the sheaths for his daggers and swords. Then we switch to Holy White, and we apply this to the trim of the boots, and I will also paint that little candle that is next to the skull. The trick with Holy White is to make sure you don't apply it too thickly. If you apply it really thickly, you will get a quite grey colour. We want the white paint underneath to do most of the work for the Holy White for us. And the final thing to do here is just to paint his little amulet using Orc Skin. And what I'm doing here is I'm painting the green on and then I'm getting a clean brush and just wiping most of it back off again to give it a little reflective surface. And that is Brutog finished, obviously apart from his base, which I'm not going to do in this video. Because with Brutog done, we are going to move straight on to his comrade in arms, his much shorter companion, Dagni Holdenstock, who I have to admit is my favourite of the two stalwart heroes. I would rather go into battle with Dagni than I would with Brutog, just because Dagni has a really cool harpoon. But once again, we are starting with an Army Painter Matte White Spray, a good coat of that all over the miniature. And once again, Dagni is not glued into his base, so during the painting, I can remove him from the base just to more easily reach areas like the back of his coat. 
and with the army painter matte white dry, we are of course going to use our lead belcher to paint all of the metal details and there are a lot of metal details on this miniature too. We have the weapons, the armour, we have the big backpack, obviously the massive harpoon gun, we have pauldrons, extra little details, so all of that gets a good coat of lead belcher. Because we're going to be painting Dagni pretty much the same way we painted Brutog. Lots of Gravelord Grey, lots of hardened leather. They are our heavily armoured tank characters after all. And really when it comes to these speed painting projects, applying all of the metal paints before moving on to actually applying these speed paints usually takes the most time. But with that lead belcher dry we can move on to dark wood and we are going to apply this to Dagni's trousers. And I will also put it on the stock of his harpoon gun. Next I'm going to paint the inside of his coat with blood red. For this I am removing him from the base. So this just gets applied inside all of the coat and also the inside of the collar. It's not absolutely necessary but I thought a nice little pop of red would add some more interest to the character. Next we're moving to Gravelord Grey and we're going to be applying this to lots of the metal on the miniature and there's two types of metal tone we're using. We're going to use Gravelord Grey on some and we will use hardened leather on the rest and really it's up to you where you want to apply it. I'm applying Gravelord Grey to the head of his axe, the tip of his harpoon, some of the details on the harpoon gun itself, his leg armour, the pipe work for his harpoon gun and a few little details on the backpack and also his mechanical eye. Next is Crusader skin, I'm just going to apply this to his face and the top of his head. It's the only skin you can see on this miniature. And then I'm switching to Grim Black and I'm just going to apply this to his gauntlets. I could have done these in grey or in a brown, but they are an opportunity to add some additional colour if you want to move away from the muted tones of the palette that I have chosen. Next is the hardened leather. This is going to go on his coat because I want it to look like he's wearing a big leather trench coat. And then I'm going to apply it to the other metal details that haven't already had Gravelord Grey applied to them. So that's the rest of the harpoon gun, the backpack, and all the other little metal details. I'm also going to apply it to the straps on the front of his jerkin, his belt buckle, and the little steam valve hanging down off of his belt. Hardened Leather continues to be one of my favourite Army Painter speed paints, if not my favourite, and I think it always gets really good results. Next I'm switching to Pallid Bone and I'm going to paint the little scroll that is hanging off of his waist. He is also, you may have noticed, standing on a skeleton, so the skeleton will also get some Pallid Bone applied to it. Then I'm switching to Orc Skin and I'm going to do the same thing to his eye that I did on Brutog's amulet. So I'm applying the green and then I'm getting a clean brush and I'm just wiping most of the green back off to give it like a glimmer of light. And that is completely finished again apart from the base. For the bases I am using Sterling Mud, they will get dry brushed. And I did paint these erroneously with silver trim. They are not going to be silver, I'm going to overpaint those with black because these are heroes, they are not villains. But I'm not doing that in this video because this video is over. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.